the name of the rose and the Decameron are both about the same moment in history. It is the late Middle Ages. They take place in the 1300s. In the case of the Decameron, it was actually written in that very century. The name of the rose was written in the 20th century by Umberto Eco, a scholar of uh, the Middle Ages. Umberto Eco, despite the fact that he was born seven centuries later, we can be sure that was extremely accurate and precise with the description of the psychology, the theology, the mentality of those times, because that is what he knew probably better than anybody else. The Decameron is a collection of 100 uh, short stories. The premise is that 10 young folks, around age 20, go leave the city of Florence and go to a villa in the countryside for 10 days. And here, every day, each one of them tells a story to the rest. So 10 days, 10 stories a day for a total of 100 stories. The premise, the reason why they are leaving Florence is that the city is ravaged by the plague and it is a historical reference to the plague that afflicted Europe between 1346 and 1353 which killed approximately half the population of the continent. None of the stories is about the plague. They are about every other aspect of life you can possibly imagine. They're sad, they're happy, they're joyous, they're devastating, they talk about loss, they talk about gain, they talk about jokes, they talk about simple people. But most of all, these are stories about love. Love between a man and a woman. Love between humans. Lust, desire, carnal love, spiritual love, any form imaginable of love. But at the core of it is basically love for life and love for being alive. And Pasolini, the director of the movie, wanted to capture exactly that sense of vitality, of reality, of life. Pasolini, the director, was an enormously influential intellectual in the 20th century, a poet, director, and novelist. He chose the stories that expressed vitality, a desire for lust, for life, for pleasure. He connected with the human element of the low-class citizens, the normal people, those who are not obsessed with the thoughts of God and the devil and the spirits, but really lived their lives in a carnal way. It only touches upon the corruption of the church, showing how these priests who commit these uh, sexual sins uh, uh, are all together after all, after all, they're human, and they have the same wishes, desires, and needs as everybody else. Pasolini was uh, homosexual, and it was very well known in the artistic uh, circles in Italy, although he never, quote-unquote, came out. That was not the kind of thing that would happen to a public figure in Italy in the 70s. So through sexuality in this film and other films, he wants to express the sense and the desire for liberation. He seems to be saying here that human nature is what it is. It is beautiful. It is positive. Uh, it predisposes us to acceptance uh, and requires acceptance by everybody. There is also this sort of joyous and pranky uh, love of life, uh, as if life itself was, quote-unquote, <laughs> a joke, something to laugh about, to joke about. The narrative structure of the film wants to make us feel the way the audience felt when they read the book, when it first came out. He wanted us to react the way the readers of Boccaccio reacted when they read the book, or the people 
who heard the readers reading out loud the books for the illiterate. He wanted us to be that illiterate audience. Pasolini was able to penetrate very deeply the psychology and the characters, the individual characters. There is a simplicity, there is a lack of complication in relating to the accidents, to the events, to the jokes, to the pranks, to the tricks, to the games that were playing. And I think Pasolini did a fantastic job in reproducing the simplicity, again, of that psychological world in masterful strokes with masterful characters. Also the choice of the actors. A lot of them were taken directly from the street, had no formal training, and he looked for faces that had a particular value. He wasn't looking for symbols, but something that was much more concrete to the essence of the soul that Boccaccio infused into these very characters. It is considered one of his most successful films, both in terms of the message about his vision of life and the artistic rendition of that vision.